In this video, we're going to look at the hierarchy of roads. All transportation facilities are arranged hierarchically. Why? Well, there are two distinct functions, through movement and land access. This allows us to aggregate traffic to achieve economies of scale and construction operation. It allows us to have higher speeds, it reduces the number of traffic conflicts, and it maintains the quiet character of residential neighbors neighborhoods by keeping through traffic away from homes. It also contains less redundancy and so it may be less costly to build. Here we see an idealized map of an area illustrating different layers of the hierarchy and how they interact. The freeway is at the top of the hierarchy. There are major arterials which have freeway interchanges. They themselves intersect other major arterials and minor arterials. The minor arterials connect to neighborhood distributor roads and those connect to neighborhood traffic collectors. At the bottom of the hierarchy, roads may be arranged like a tree and not interconnect at all. So we can see this is a trade-off between movement and axis. On the x-axis, we have speed, slow speed to fast speed, and on the y-axis, we have flow, low flow to high flow. Links which are slow tend to have low flow, and links which are fast tend to have high flow. Those fast High flow links are limited access, while those slow, low flow links are neighborhood streets. And we arrange our routes along the diagonal, ideally, so that we have trade-offs between movement and access. We give labels to the different types of roads. We have what's called a functional classification. This includes limited access highways, which serve through movements between cities and across cities. We can see a map of the limited access system in the Twin Cities region shown here, where the colors indicate the level of congestion on each of these routes. The next level of the hierarchy are linking routes. These provide for traffic between limited access and local streets, and they have direct abutting access uh, for property owners. Finally, there are local streets, collector and distributor roads, that serve primarily for traffic movement in residential areas. So when we're building transportation models, what are we interested in modeling, and what can we simplify? In a regional model, it's typical to simplify local streets. So we define a centroid to represent all of the local access onto the higher level street network. We also describe the network with graph theory. We have zone centroids, nodes, links, turns, routes, and modes. So there's a zone centroid that represents each transportation analysis zone, which has an xy coordinate. There are node vertices, which indicate the intersection of links, and they're located also by xy coordinates. There are links, which are identified by the from node and the to node. There are turns, which are identified by a sequence of three nodes. There are routes, which are a sequence of multiple nodes, for instance, a bus route. And there are modes, which indicate which types of technology are allowed on each individual link. This movie shows the evolution of the state highway network in the metropolitan Twin Cities region. Initially, all of the links were two-lane undivided highways, indicated by the green lines. But over time, many of those links were upgraded as the network was built out and individual links were widened. So you can see the red lines indicating the emergence of divided highways. By the 1960s, the interstate highway system begins to appear. And those are not only divided, they're also limited access, meaning that they have no driveways on them. They only have access from interchanges. This is completed through the 1970s and 80s, and by the 1990s, the backbone of the network is essentially complete. 